Stan Jibalisco here from the Nerd Castle Kitchen of all places with a little uh, demonstration of how to solder two pieces of stranded wire to each other. What I have here before you is some solder, 40% tin, 60% lead, rosin core solder that I got from the local hardware store. What I have here is a fuse holder which I will probably never use for any other purpose besides making this video. If the background noise distracts you, bear in mind that it is an exhaust fan which you should always use when you are soldering electrical equipment because the vapors from the solder are not particularly good for you to breathe. Here we have a 260 watt professional grade soldering gun which is more than enough heat for this application. And you'll notice the bamboo meat cutting board, very small, but it's intended to serve as a rest for this connection while I'm soldering it made out of a material that will conduct the heat away effectively but will not in fact catch on fire itself. What I'm going to do is twist splice these two pieces of stranded wire. You don't want to twist the strands up and then make the splice. You want to make sure the strands are untwisted and then make the splice out of untwisted strands. You can do either a twist splice as I have done here because the wire links aren't really long enough for a Western Union splice. Well, let me try that over again. This is pretty doggone heavy gauge wire. I don't know, number 10, maybe number 8. Pretty heavy stuff. The leads aren't long enough for a Western Union splice. So I've got that laying down on there like that. Get a little solder out there. Then what you want to do is you want to start up your soldering gun. These little bulbs in this soldering gun don't seem to want to light up for some reason. There's, a, there's an intermittent connection in the bulbs, but uh, it's not intermittent in the, in the heating element. Now if the heating element in a soldering gun like this fails to heat up adequately, the first thing that you should do is make sure that these connections here are tight and they use those little hex wrenches. You need to have a set of those to get in there and tighten them up. But I'm running this uh, soldering gun now for a good long time until it until the tip gets very very hot then I hold that tip on that stranded wire without applying solder and I heat up that wire until it gets so hot that it will melt the solder without my having to actually touch the solder to the tip of the soldering gun. If you do that it's just gonna beat up and drip off of that tip like that. You've got to heat this wire up really hot. That's why this cutting board is here. Now notice that smoke. Do you see any smoke coming off of there? It's going up towards the exhaust fan. It takes quite a lot of wattage to heat this wire up like that. It's, it's pretty heavy gauge wire as I said. But now it's, it's melting that solder all the way out to the very end of the wire and you just keep on heating it and heating it and watch that solder flow in between those strands like that. Now we're going to scorch that board, no doubt about it, but it's probably not going to catch on fire. I bought that board at the grocery store, by the way. Now that 
sort of spoils the aesthetic value of that meat cutting board, but a lot better the board than the surface uh, that I'm working on, which is uh, laminate, I guess, or something like that. Then once that thing is good and hot and flowed in, then you just take that iron off of there and then you wait a good long time before you handle that wire unless you have a fondness for third degree or second degree burns on the tips of your fingers. So that's how you do that. Now after a few minutes that thing will be cool and that would be one heck of a solder joint. Stan Jibalisco signing off for now. Smoking gun and all. So long.